Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, yeah. So, uh, in this video, the we were proving the, the I'm going to prove the Zamoradi regularity lemma. Uh, so recall that uh, uh recall that uh, given a graph G, uh, if we I can define uh for any given two subset x and y, then I can define the so called the uh, the edge density. Basically, it's the number of edges <coughs> divided by uh x and y. So the number of edges connecting x to y is basically u v belongs to e, e, a set of edges such that u belongs to x and v belongs to y. So you just count the number of edges which cross these two pair. Uh, these two pair can be the can can be the same or not. So it doesn't. It you just write down a definition. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> so given epsilon greater than zero, then we say x y is epsilon regular if for any subset A. In X being Y, if A is greater than epsilon X, B is greater than epsilon Y. So basically, A and B are large enough, and uh, the edge density less than epsilon. Then we say uh, X and Y are epsilon regular. Okay. Uh, so let me just write down one thing. So uh, if X and Y are not epsilon regular, okay, that means that uh, there is a certificate, right? So there is this A. And uh, B such that uh, A is larger than epsilon X and uh, B is larger than epsilon Y, but edge density is greater or equal to epsilon. Okay, so this is the so this is the corollary. This is just definition. Okay, and uh, and uh, so given the partition, so if we start with some partition V P, which is V one up to V K. And then, which is the v, which the all, all vertices are partitioned into this sub, uh, this small part. Then it's called epsilon regular partition. If you take the irregular part or not, not, uh, not epsilon regular part, and then you sum over the the number of it, the uh, vi times vj, then you should that's or equal to epsilon times the total number of vertices squared. So basically, this just tells you that the sum over the size of epsilon irregular pair is small enough. Okay, so uh, the famous uh, Zamoradi regularity lemma says the following. So the weird, uh, so if you remember that, uh, so by definition, right, if you can, if each each verse is, uh, is its own part, then it must be epsilon regular. But this regularity lemma tell you that uh, for epsilon greater than zero, there's always some number m. That this m will be uh, very large, right? Uh, maybe very large or not, but just some number function of m, uh, sorry, function of epsilon such that for every graph, so this is the powerful results. Okay, for every graph, for every every graph, there is always an epsilon regular partition of G into at most m of epsilon part. So the 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 so the astonishing uh, part for this theorem is that the m of epsilon does not depend on does not depend on size of graph. So if your G is astronomically large, then I can always I can still do this find epsilon partition at most m of epsilon part. Okay, and uh, so let's write down the proof. So uh, the proof basically based on the so called uh, the the ba proof basically start with uh, you need to define energy basically given a partition you can define energy, and you start with trivial partition, and you do the you do the uh, you you do some claim. Right? You claim that if you, uh, if the, if the 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 partition is not epsilon regular, then you can keep partition. And once you keep partition, then energy will increase. But the energy will, uh, by definition, will bounded by zero to one. So uh, you cannot keep increasing. Okay. So after some number of steps, then you must uh stop. Okay. So once it stops, then you can bound the number of parts. Okay. The proof is very tricky. Okay, so let me just write down some definition. Okay, so the definition one, which is uh, if you take the the u and the w be subset of v, let's say v is number, the v is uh, the total set v is n, then you can define the energy, let's say qw. So this is the energy, energy of u u w, of defined to be uh just some just u and w. Divide by n square and the d u w square. Okay, and so this is the given any two subset of v. You can always define this. Okay, and so given but given the partition, 
U1 up to UK and the partition PW, let's say uh, W1 up to WL. Then uh, we can define it. Then the, we define energy, right? So we define energy. So given the partition, right? Given you, we define a partition by, uh, we, we define energy between a partition PU and PW by just compute the pair sum of energy, right? So this is uh, obviously uh, just some, uh, just obviously definition, right? So you can start with, let's say, uh, let's say maybe I use I. Okay, I from L and Q of W. J and oh, sorry U J U J U J W I. Okay, and uh, so the third definition is for given partition. There's a fixed partition P U. Then we define a partition of the uh we we'll define a partition the energy of this partition to be just Q P U P U. Okay. Okay. So simply speaking, this will be just the write down definition. Sum from one to n, sorry, uh, k, uh, k is a k part, and uh, j from one to k, and the uh, u i, u j divided by n square. So just take the take two part, uh, take the product right? u i u j, and uh, d of u i u j square. Okay. Okay. So hopefully this definition is clear. Okay. So you have u i and the uj part and for you just count the number of edge density and you square it and the the weight is basically this okay so the fact so we just write down a fact the fact is that given any partition this will bound it by one and that's greater or equal to zero so greater or equal to zero is trivial because every time every part is square and less or equal to one is also trivial right the reason is that uh you can just uh do a simple calculation right? this is just let's say ui uh, u j divided by n square, and the d u i u j square, right? So this is that's equal to one, right? So you can bound it by uh, i from one to k, j from one to k, and the uh, one over n square, u i and the u j, and then these are separate, uh, separable, right? So it's just summation u i, i from one to k square. And this is just n, right? So it's n square divided by n square, which is one. Okay, so very simple, very trivial. Okay. Uh okay, so uh so we so now we have we need three lemmas. Okay, so lemma one. Uh lemma one is the following, right? If we start with u and w, any set of u and w, and we if we do a partition, okay, we partition into P U and the P W parts. Okay, so this means that uh, I partition P U into let's say U1 up to UK. And the PW to be W1 up to WL. So basically this the sum the union of U will be just union of U I will be U, union W will be W. Okay. So uh okay, so let me say if you do this, so basically if you partition U and W, then the energy increase. Okay. So P U P W will greater equal to uh UW. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> the proof is tricky. So uh, the proof is using the probability argument. Okay, so you define random variable Z. So let me just write down. So this is random variable. <laughs> and uh, this random variable is, uh, computes the... Okay, so let me just write down the following. Uh, okay, so this ra ra random variable is, is defined to be uh, the edge density between... Let me just, maybe let me just write down. Okay. So we, okay, so we randomly pick. So let's say I randomly, uniform random, so I uniform random pick X belongs to U and then Y belongs to W, right? So I pick X belongs to U, Y belongs to W. So uh, there will be some I and the J such that uh, X belongs to some UI by definition and y belongs to some wj and once i do this then i then i compute then z will be the random variable right so i pick randomly you i randomly pick random uni uh ran, i pick uniform random x and y and so there is this i and j such that this is uh this right, x belongs to this and y belongs to this then z is defined to be the the edge then the the density between the ui and w wj 
Okay, so this is definition of Z. Okay, so Z, Z is a random variable. Okay. Okay, it looks a little bit too, uh, weird, but 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 we will see the, the tricky part. Okay, <laughs> so uh, now let's compute the expectation value, right? So this is simple, right? So it's basically I from one to uh, K, J from one to L. So I pin the pick X, right? You're even random, right? So the probability that uh, it belongs to small UI will be this, and the probability belongs to WJ will be this, and then we should compute the, density, right? So it's ui and wj. Okay, how about uh, this squared? Okay, so we do the same thing. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, uh, so this part, this, so this is the same, right? Because this just calculated z squared, so we just do this. So we just do the ui and wj squared. Okay, so uh, once we do this, uh, we can compute both, right? So this part, so this guy, uh, this guy, uh, by definition, right? This guy is basically the edge, the edge between U i and the U W j divided by U i and the W j. Okay, so uh, this, so uh, this this U i and W j cancel with this capital U i. Okay, so it canceled. Okay, so uh, all you get is one from k, j from l, and the d of u i and the w sorry, h between u i and w j. Okay, right, and uh, and the divided by divided by u and w, right? So, but u and w are fixed, so I can pull out it. Okay. So what's this? Okay. So there. So these are like, these are basically you just sum over the u i and w j, and you sum over the all the part from u i and w j. But this is the same as you sum over the edge between the u and w, right? Because all the edge either come from i part or j part. Okay. So this guy is basically the exactly the same as d of u w. Okay. Okay. And uh, how about this guy? So let me just do it. How about this guy? So this guy is basically the i from one to k, j from one to l. So I I, I can pull out this u and w. Okay. So let me just pull out it. And the uh, ui and wj, right? So this square, right? So you just write, you just, you just, by definition, right? You just write down. So you get the uh, ui, wj. Now you divide n square here, and then you multiply n square here, and then this is d u i w j square. Oh, uh, sorry. Sometimes I use I use the lowercase u. Sometimes I use just uppercase u. They they, uh, they are the same, just for my uh bad writing. So once you do this square, then by definition, right? By definition, these guys are uh, the energy between the partition P U and P W. Okay, so these are n square. U W Q of P U P W. Okay, then uh, by a simple fact, which I think everyone knows, the second moment is always greater or equal to the first moment square. Okay, so this implies that the uh, Q P U P W this guy is greater or equal to D of U W. Okay. So square, okay. So if you do this, then you prove so Q of P U P W greater or equal to U W divided by N square D square U W. Okay. So by definition, these the right hand side become the Q U W. Okay. Remember the Q U W definition. Q U W definition is this. Okay. So U times W divided by N square U uh, W square. Okay. So uh, now we we talk about lemma two. Okay, so lemma two is also called energy boost lemma. So this this lemma just tell you that uh, uh if you start with some irregular part, sorry sorry ir irregular pair, right? Let's say so we have a uh, u and w. Let's say they are these are irregular pair, so the u w are uh ir epsilon irregular. So that means that uh, you can find a subset. Let's say a a here, and a subset b here such that uh, a is greater or equal to epsilon u, 
and the B is greater or equal to epsilon W, such that their density are such that their edge density are greater or equal to epsilon, then we can do the separate, uh, we, we can write down, so let's say this part is U minus W, uh, so U minus A, and this guy is W uh, minus B. Okay, so we can we can compute the partition, right? So we want to ask what's the what's the energy between this this partition, U A A, and the B W B. Okay, so this lemma tell you that this guy, this partition, greater or equal to Q U W by some amount. Okay, and this amount is basically this. Okay, so this is called the uh, energy 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 boost lemma. Okay, and uh, okay, so this is the goal. We want to prove this. We want to say that uh, you, if you take a epsilon irregular part and break out, break this epsilon irregular part into two parts, then the energy will increase. Okay. Uh, so proof we, we just define. Uh, so we can define uh, z as above as previous. Okay, and uh, we we compute the variance of z, which is uh, e of z square minus z square. Okay, so uh, if we do this, then uh, obviously that, uh, okay, so this simple calculation, you can prove by yourself the same same, same proof. It's basically this n square u w and the uh, q of uh, u delete a, a, b, uh, w delete b minus q of u w. Okay, these are simple. These are simple proof, as we previous proof. Okay, so these are simple, and uh, but we know this guy must be great. Must be also can be computed by this guy, right? Z minus expectation value of Z, and uh, take the uh, right. You can square it, right? And take the expectation value. Okay, so in in particular, you are greater or equal to something. Uh, we're greater or equal to uh any particular term in the right hand side right because the right hand side is always square always positive right so you can take any take any okay okay so uh so obviously this guy will greater equal to something right so you just care about the the probability that you pick something from a okay uh you you pick something from a right so let's say so uh let's say you pick a so if you if you run if you randomly pick some number from uh from uh, from some element from a then this is probability that uh, that you pick some element from a and also b and this guy will should con will, will contribute something or contribute the uh, will contribute this term contribute this term right z minus something right so z so z is the 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 edge density right between a and b okay so edge density also the and the, the the expectation value right so expectation value of z right as we just compute pre previously right this guy is basically d of uh uw so uh basically d of uw okay square okay so now the the rules are stupid right because we know that this is uh epsilon irregular so these are greater yeah, greater than epsilon and these are greater than epsilon, and these are uh, greater than epsilon square. Right? So it's epsilon to the fourth. Okay, so we finish the proof, right? Because we show that this guy is greater than equal to epsilon to the fourth. Okay, so we just finish the proof, right? Just uh, multiple these to the right hand side and the uh, massage, and then you get this. Okay, so now we go to the final part. Okay, so that's this lemma three. Okay. okay, so lemma three is the final part, which is a little bit tricky. Okay, so uh, let's say we start with some partition v one up to v k of g. It's not epsilon regular. It's not epsilon regular. So we claim that if it's not epsilon regular, we then we can do keep partition and become epsilon regular. Okay, so uh, so that means that there's a let's say ai ai comma j in vi and the aj comma i in vj, which is the with some part some ij for ij irregular pair, you can find this this subset which is uh, the witness. 
Okay, and uh, okay, so we can define a uh, uh, so let's define Q to be the refinement. Okay, so these are refinement, refinement by uh, AIJ. So these are tricky. Okay, so let me just write down. So if you have V1, V2, and V3, and let's say both are all of V1, V2 are irregular, V1, V3 are irregular, V2, R, V3 are both irregular, right? So there are so, but then you can separate these parts. Let's call this A12. So you have some A21 here, right? And uh this V1 and V3 also have some A13 parts, and these are A31 parts. And then these are have the A A21 part and A31 part. So this V1 will break down into one, two, three, four. A V2 will break down one, two, three, four. A V2 will break one, two, three, four. So you just break this. Just keep breaking. Okay. So this refinement is called Q. Okay. So obviously that uh, we can say that each VK uh, break at most uh, into uh, two to the K parts, right? Because V1 uh, for each, for each, Step uh for each refinement, you just the, the you can cut half, right? So v1 will be cut by the rest of k minus one. Okay, so vk, so vi, so for each vi break at most k two to the k part. Okay, and then this guy, this this small refinement are called q. Okay, so final results claim that the partition of q, the energy of greater or equal to partition of p by the finite amount of epsilon. So they call uh, epsilon fifth. Okay, so this is the final lemma. Okay, so let me just, uh, before I prove it, let me just write down the consequence. Okay, so consequence is the following. So uh, so you start with three, so let me, so then we can prove the Zamoradi regularity, right? So the proof, let me just write down. So suppose uh, lemma one, lemma two, lemma three uh, are both are true, that we already proved one of one and two, right? And then I will prove three. But let me assume that they are all they are all correct. Then I can prove the Zamorati regularity lemma, and the proof is very simple. I start with the trivial partition. This is tri a trivial partition, right? And uh, if it's if it's if it's epsilon irregular, then I just use I can use lemma three and the partition, the keep partition. Okay, and the energy will start with something Q0 from Q0 plus epsilon to a fifth. And if it's still epsilon irregular, I use lemma three, keep partition. Then it will increase by Q0 by two epsilon to a fifth. And then keep going, right? But Q, but this guy cannot bound, it's bounded by one. Okay, so that means that the second step, the second step terminates after a one over epsilon to a fifth steps then finish the proof, right? Because if terminate one over epsilon to the fifth stress, this is not dependent on the size of graph, right? So the number of parts is bounded by some function of epsilon, which is may very, very large, but bounded by epsilon because uh, either one of epsilon parties, uh, one over epsilon to fifth part is uh, this, uh, this proof, uh, this second step will always terminate. Okay, so... Uh, let me just write down the proof of lemma three. Uh, t -t 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 -t. Okay, so these parts are uh, simple. Okay, so we just write down the partition, right? So we can just write down. So I can write down the vi, vj. So let me assume this vi, vj are already part the already part uh are already partition. Okay. So I can write down, let me just write down. Uh, I can just, let me just write down. I, let me just label this by QVI and QVJ. So I just, I just break it, break it up, okay? And uh, so one, so once I break it, right? So uh, once I break this part, then uh, by lemma one, right? By lemma one. Hmm? Then this, this breakup, uh, this breakup part, or the energy will greater or equal to the small parts. Right by by uh by lemma one because this q this q one uh this this uh let me just write down. so or, so you have v one right and the v, this v one break into smokes small part right so all the all, so all this so now we are computing all this small part right this small part energy will greater or equal to this the the this v one part and the mod the irregular part okay 
So uh, simply speaking, it's the following. So you just so you just write down this. Let's say uh, so this operator equal to v i and v j. Let's say if it's re regular q of v i v j, right? Because v q v i are refinement of v i, q v j are refinement of v j. Okay, so we plus uh v i v j epsilon irregular q of now we can use lemma too, right? So let me just break out a i j v i slash a i j and uh a j i v j slash with a j i. Okay, so right, so q r is a refinement of v i, right? And q v j is a refinement of v j. So this q v i, this separate, this part come from some part which already is epsilon regular or irregular. Right. If it's regular, then then just uh, if it's regular, we just keep we just maybe don't partition. Right. If it's irregular, then we just keep partition. So this guy will go to equal to this, right? By lemma one, and now we can use lemma two, right? Lemma two tell me the bound of this, right? So so uh, okay. So the, 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 so this part by lemma two, this guy will go to equal to Q of uh, v i v j and the sum over let's say v i v j epsilon irregular plus something uh plus something which is v i v j uh n square and the d of v i v j oh sorry we're going to equal to this right and the v i v j and the epsilon to the fourth okay so now this epsilon irregular parts and epsilon regular parts, right? So sum over these two parts give you the original Q of V. So plus the rest, right? Some rest, the rest part. So let me just write down the, the results, right? So you get QQ greater or equal to QV plus VI, VJ, which is epsilon irregular and the VI, VJ, N square epsilon to the fourth, okay? So let me so remember what's the definition of irregular partition. So irregular partition tell you that the summation of v i v j irregular v i v j n square yeah, that's what you could epsilon right. So these are that's what you could epsilon. So these are q q q plus q v plus, plus epsilon to the fifth. Finish your proof. Okay, so okay, so uh, this basically proved the Zamoradi regularity demo. Okay, so the next time uh, I will show some uh, application.